What's up everyone? Vu of Envu Films here, back with another time-wasting video. If you want to waste more time than watching this video, I would suggest going to Soundstripe and search for a song to use on a video, because that'll probably take you a solid eight hours. I'm just kidding, I actually use Soundstripe a lot, I actually really like them. Uh, please watch me. So, what is today's video? I really have no idea, other than the fact that I have all of my lenses here, so I guess I will talk about it. I have done a uh, wedding gear video probably a few weeks back, um, but I don't really go in depth with my lenses, what I use them for, when I use them, etc. Um, so here they are. They're all Sony glass because I only buy baller stuff. You're not going to see Rokinen or anything here. Um, this is all baller gear. As you can see, G Master, G Master on the Alpha 6500 that's filming right now. And these are all Zeiss glass. The only quote unquote um, cheap lens, this is 85 uh, 1.8. And all of you who have used this 85 1.8, you know this gear, it hits above its weight, weight class, all right? It, it is. You know, the only thing that separates this from like the G Master is probably like the smoothness of the bokeh, but this bokeh is not bad either. So this is a solid lens. Um, anyways, I'm just doing another video with a bunch of gear here to eventually be able to put links for Amazon affiliates under my description. So when people click those links and buy the gear from those links, I get paid. Everything I do is to get paid, all right? You know, how else would I afford all this gangster gear if I didn't make sure I get paid for everything. Okay? That's real talk. Um, it's all about the greenbacks, you know? Like G Master, G stands for gangster and also greenbacks because, you know, Sony takes all your greenbacks when you, you buy these lenses and you should be able to make those greenbacks back when you use these lenses on a gig. Okay? So that is that. Um, moving right along, let's start with the first lens. Um, that I have, which is not actually here, it's actually on the camera that's filming right now. It's a 1635. It's actually a more recent lens. I use this mainly, obviously, for wide angle stuff. Um, real estate shoots, that's gonna be my main lens. It's probably the only lens I'll use for real estate shoots. Uh, weddings, I'll use it more for like showing off the venue, showing off the landscape, gimbaling um, certain things, uh, you, know, you know, such as the ceremony room, the reception area, things like that. That's what that lens is used for. And you know, sometimes details, I'm trying to get like a more wide angle shot of like the dress or something like that. That's what I use a 1635 for. Um, that's a G Master F 2.8. Um, so next, I would say my go-to wedding lens. Um, first of all, this used to be, okay, my, my go-to wedding lens is 2470. Um, but my second shooters, a lot of them either don't have a video camera, uh, they don't bring their own gear, or they do have their own gear, but they're GH5s, right? I told them, I'd rather you use my gear than you use your GH5s because I want my footage to be clean and consistent. I don't want, you know, small sensor type stuff. You know, I don't want noise at 500 ISO. I don't want no depth of field at f2.8, okay? I don't wanna, you know, edit 4K 60p on my second shooter's camera and start feeling jealous that I don't have it. What else? What else can I say? What else? If I wanted to have the f5.6, f8 you know, look all day, I just shoot with my cell phone. I won't, you know, get like a $2,000 uh, mirrorless GH5 to get that look, all right? I'm not trying to go 0.95 and manual focus everything on a GH5. I don't want to see missed focus. Okay, I want things in focus. That's why Sony's have great autofocus. I don't want that, you know, jumpy autofocus from the GH5 messing up my footage. Okay. Anyway, so to make things simpler and uh, easier for my second shooters, I let them use a G Master 2470 f2.8. It's a great range. They get a wide variety of shots during prep, during ceremony. Um, and f2.8, the, the, the bokeh, the depth of field is still very creamy um, with this lens. So this was my lens, go-to lens before I got these primes, but now this is my um, second shooter's go-to lens um, on weddings. Okay, my go-to lens would be the 50. 50 millimeter F1.4 Zeiss. No, this is not Sigma. Like I said, I'm getting Sony stuff. 
from all things I hear, the Sigma is a great lens, and I'm sure it is, okay? But from my experience, to get more of the most consistent performance results, I'm not talking about just the image after the fact, but like the usage of it, um, how much I trust it, the autofocus, all those things. I just had the best luck with Sony glass on Sony cameras. Um, I'm sure the third parties are great, but I prefer to just have the peace of mind that I know I got good gear. Um, this is my go-to lens when I am doing prep. During all like the photo sessions, all like the romantics, I use this 50 f1.4. Uh, this 50 f1.4. Um, I just like the distance. I like the uh, the look of it. It's nice and square. There's no like wideness to it like a 35 would have. Um, and a lot of times the photographer uses a 50 as well. So the photographer uses a 50, and I use the 50. We're the same length, so like we theoretically would never get in front of each other's shots. So you know that helps just with the workflow. Not only that, when I go into APS-C mode, I get like a 72 millimeter out of this 50, which gives me a lot of range, you know? And obviously the F4.4, it gives me like nice blurred backgrounds, like no matter how far away I am from the subject. So I can get like a wide, a reasonably wide shot with this at the same time, still isolate the subject. Uh, and which is one thing that's really great about full frame cameras. Um, it's just able to get subject isolation like with almost any lens any distance you know you, you there's there's ways to achieve the look that you want another one of my go-to lenses and i usually use the 85 millimeter f1.8 um i really love using this lens okay like if if i had my choice if there was no photographers there if i had a lot of time and like especially for like engagement shoots or uh, save the date videos i used 85 f1.8 it's it's I prefer just because I love the look, I love the compression, I love the creaminess of the background. I love the fact that um, I can be far away from them and like the, the client, the couple, and they just kind of do like things very naturally and it just looks great on the 85. Um, if, if I had more control over the wedding day, which most of the time I don't because there's so much things going on, that's why I use the 50, it's a little more versatile, it gives me more range. Um, you know, wide look, and I have I could go and tighter if I want. 85, you know, I can't get, I can't really back on it further, etc. But this, I just love the way this lens looks. If I have more control over what I'm doing, I always use the 85. 35 millimeter f1.4 Zeiss. Again, this is I consider this kind of wide, so this is more gimbal shots. This would be on gimbal most of the gimbal shots, low light, um, reception, dancing, things like that. this. Is what I use the 30, uh, 35 f1.4 for. I usually don't use this during romantics. It's just it's just um, too wide for my taste. Um, even if I do gimbal during the uh, romantic sessions, I still try to use a 50. This is a 90 millimeter macro. This is for details. I use this mostly for rings um, with lights. Um, you know, as I showed a previous video, this is how I get like nice ring shots. I use this 90 millimeter macro. Um, sometimes I do use it during romantics too, just because this is like a really sharp lens. This is probably one of the most sharpest Sony lenses out and uh and at f2.8 it's still very creamy at 90 millimeters so you could, this is a very versatile lens you could do um you can set it to macro mode or just like a standard mode you can use it as a regular lens and it's like super sharp so this is actually also a very great portion lens um now the uh, beast mode 7200 surprisingly i actually don't use this lens too much um it is mainly uh to get a groom a shot of the groom while the bride is walking down the aisle um from far away, I put this on this uh, as on the tripod in the back as a bride is walking down. Um, this gets a shot of the groom's face as you know he's reacts, he's crying when the bride is walking down, um, and then I use this as a bride shot on the uh, other side during the whole ceremony. This is this is this would be the bride shot where it shows like the bride's face and like, how she's reacting and her vows and all that stuff. This is what this is for. Um, and now we also use it for our reception for like toast and stuff if we really need the distance. But this is actually very rarely used. Um, I would like to use it more simply because it's expensive and it's like a really great lens, but you know. It, we use it for what it is, it's a telephoto. Um, sometimes in a romantic session I have a second shooter on this to get like very juicy um, romantic footage as like the, 
you know, the photo session and the, the romantic video sessions going on and from you know from far away and like with the compression it looks really nice as well with the f2.8 so say you had to pick one of these lenses all right if you say you had a sony a7 III or a7 r3 and your budget is for one lens um what lens should you get um you know if you're not poor you know i would suggest the 2470 this is the most versatile lens out of the whole group you know 2470 like i said before great range f2.8 uh, you know will get, give you great uh, separation from the subject with the background and uh this is just overall a very sharp lens this is this is an awesome lens but it's also very expensive you know your budget is under a thousand the only lens i have here that's under a thousand is 85 but i would not recommend it 85 for like the only lens you have it's just it's too tight um so unfortunately you know if you're not baller you really can't afford any of this glass you know as you notice i don't have a 55 1.8 that's that's i got the 50 f1.4 these are all over a g each um well maybe this one too is a macro but this is under a g but it's it's not as versatile you need you know 50 35 those are more versatile so you know there are options there's a sigma and stuff like that there's rokin and um there's all those there's other brand options but they're definitely not here okay um it's really unfortunate not all my viewers are as baller as i am and i understand that you know, I don't want you going out there and buying a Zeiss or G Master lens and you got to be on welfare and on food stamps. That's not cool. You know what I mean? Meanwhile, I got all this gangster G Master lenses and I'm driving a Lexus. But that is a bit too much information. Uh, we are going to move on out of that. So, like I said, if you have the money, you need one lens, you know, and that's your budget is just the one lens, you know, you go for 2470. I mean, there's other cheaper um, 2470 options out there like Tamron, um, you go ahead and get that if you wanna be, um, you know, low budget. There you have it, okay? Please, if you're interested in purchasing any of these lenses, go ahead and see if there's a link in the description. I'm still working on that, but see if there's a link in the description, click it and buy it from my affiliates. So I could, make some more money to uh, buy some more gear uh, to make more YouTube videos out of that gear to make you feel bad about it. Okay. So uh, that is it for now. Um, you know, I really don't know what else to say. You guys have a good one. And until uh, next time, happy shooting and uh, lighten up.